So I'm going to start looking at the basic angle rules for geometry topic for our geometry topic. And um, one thing to keep in mind is that you will need to know the names by uh, the rules by name and be able to use them as well. But you can use abbreviations when you're writing out what the rule is. Um, for the merit level and excellence level, you'll have to actually justify how you know a particular answer by stating what rule you used. And one thing you want to keep in mind is that it's okay to use abbreviations, um, such as the rule angles on a straight line add to 180 degrees can be abbreviated in this way, where the symbol that looks like the little less than thing, that means angles. So angle on a, sh on a line add to 180. Um, is an abbreviation of angles on a straight line add to 180. And it doesn't have to be exactly that abbreviation, but anything that if a marker was reading it, they'd be able to understand exactly what you meant and what the specifics of the rule were. And if you felt like writing out the entire rule, you can do that as well. So what we have here is um, a situation where if you have a straight line and you've got two adjacent angles on it. So adjacent basically means angles that are touching here. So they share a point and a side. And in this case, these two angles are adjacent because they share that point and they share that arm there. So adjacent angles here. And on a straight line, in total, I know I need 180 degrees. So if I'm going to work out this problem, x is just going to be equal to 180 minus 42, because I just need to know what do I have to add to 42 to get to 180. And in this case, you get x is equal to 138 degrees. As a second example, here we're looking again, I notice I have a straight line and adjacent angles. So here we've got them sharing a point. It's also one thing I think about sometimes with uh, adjacent angles is thinking about like a windscreen wiper, that around that point those angles would rotate back and forth, or you know, a windscreen wiper would rotate back and forth between them, and um, pivoting from the center, so then you know they're all together on the straight line. So this little square symbol here, of course, means that we have 90 degrees. So x would be equal to 180 minus 90 minus 23. So then we get x is equal to 67 degrees. And again, angles on a straight line will add up to 180 as our reasoning for it. Um, our next rule that we will look at is vertically opposite angles are equal. And in this case, I like to think about chopsticks. You've got to make sure the lines are straight and continuous. A shortcut for that might be vert op angle equal. So if we look at this one, we've got two lines that cross each other like chopsticks. They make a nice X there. And I'm not sure exactly why they use vertical there, because it's not always vertically opposite. But here, x is on the opposite side of the 45, so I can see that x is equal to 45. So they're the exact same on vertically opposite angles. Here again, I'm going to look for my straight lines that go through like chopsticks. There's one of them, and there's two of them. So, vertically opposite angles means that 40 sorry, 140 there, is going to be the same as everything over here. So x should be equal to 140 minus 80, because both x and the 80 degree angle have to add up to 140. So here you get x is equal to 60 degrees. Now one thing you'll want to watch out for on this is you always have one straight line and a second straight line. Make sure you don't end up with a situation with one line that looks like it's sort of straight, but really is bent. For instance, this one here is not a straight line, so these would not be vertically opposite angles because they're not two perfectly straight lines crossing each other. Uh, angles at a point, another key rule for us. So angles at a point add up to 360 degrees. And we get that because there's 360 degrees all the way around a, a, a circle. If you turn 360 degrees, you get back to where you come from. So when they share a point, like these guys do on this diagram, um, all the way around should add up to 360. So if you've got 110, we would do x is equal to 360 minus 110, and you get 250. And you're reasoning again, like they've done on all these, 
You'd include your reason there, vertically opposite angles or angles at a point add to 360. In this situation, we might have to pull together a few for our example. So I do think that I notice they all add to a point there, so I am going to get 360 all the way around. I've got 35 and I've got 90 degrees, but I need a little bit more information here. So one thing that I might think about doing, um, oh, there'd be lots of ways to solve this problem. First thing that I notice is that I've got vertically opposite angles here between the 35 and the x. So x is equal to 35 degrees. And then I would say here, vert op angle equal is my reason. And it's sometimes helpful to write in the degrees too, so if you put 35 there, you can start to see what you're missing. Um, another situation that I might notice here is that these guys are all on a straight line. So they should add up to 180. So I could do z is equal to 180 minus 90 minus 35. So in this case, I get z is equal to 55 degrees, and my reason for that would be angles on straight line, sum 180. So they add up to 180 degrees. Okay, so if I know that this is 55, see if there's anything else I can piece together here. Um, I could do angles on a straight line again. So I could do 35 and y, those will add up on a straight line. I also notice that these guys and these guys are vertically opposite angles because they both share those yellow straight lines. Well, it looks blue now, hidden behind the yellow there. Um, so I could do 90 plus 55 gives me 145 degrees. Um, or I could do y is equal to 180 minus 35 and that's equal to 145 degrees angles on straight line sum to 180. If you had um, if you have more than one way to solve an angle you don't have to put all your reasons in for it but you can um, just pick one that works for you. It's okay if there's more than one way to do it because often in these problems there's more than one way to do it. For instance I might have found angle Y first and then gone from there to find Z or X so order doesn't really matter as long as you're clear with your reasonings the whole way through.